ready to enter a secret agency where the world's greatest agents come together for the most action-packed missions ever. Buckle up and grab your Nintendo DS for some world-class racing. Take on any mission around the world with your favorite Cars characters. Good job. The choice is yours, Agent. Are you in? Cars 2 the video game for Nintendo DS. Spies Wanted. Available now. Hello everyone, it's the Axel Shifter here and I am back with the next Forlorn Classics episode. And today, we're going to be discussing a game of mine that I have played the absolute shit back in the day. Like seriously, I was religiously obsessed with this game. And that is Cars 2 the video game. But not the one that you would expect, like the console version. I really, really got that recently. But today, I'm going to be talking about the one that I've always played when I was a little kid. The DS version. More specifically, the Nintendo DS version. And now, I know there is the 3DS version, of course. But, I mean, I'm basically going to be talking about the regular DS version. Because between the two, both of them are pretty much the same game. Besides from the 3DS version having some graphical improvements, of course. But... Besides from that, they're pretty much identical to each other. But, anyways, we're going to be really getting into my childhood and talking about why this version of the Cars 2 game is really unappreciated, per se. So, without further ado, let's get straight into this. First, we're starting off with a story because, believe it or not, this game actually kind of has one. And it does kind of change things a little bit, but at the same time, not really. Let me explain. So, the start of the game, we have Lightning McQueen as he tries to win his fourth Piston Cup. He ends up winning the race, and after which, he ends up going back to Radiator Springs, and then gets invited into the World Grand Prix, like he does in the Cars 2 movie. He, of course, accepts it, and the rest of the hijinks of the actual film ensue. And personally, when it comes to the story, I actually think they incorporate into this game very well, considering the hardware limitations of Nintendo DS. Now, this game was developed by Firebrand Games, the people who are responsible for many other DS racing games like the Race Driver Grid port, the Trackmania DS port, and the Colin McGree's Dirt 2 port. So, they're very experienced when it comes to making driving games for the system. And when it comes to the story in general, I personally think they still handled it very well because you can pretty much follow it pretty easily without getting too confused, even if you haven't watched Cars 2. So, yeah, I would say they handled this pretty good on that front. Now, this game has two types of gameplay styles. The standard racing, which we see with Lightning McQueen and other types of World Grand Prix racers, and the spy stuff, which you would come to expect after watching Cars 2. And these give you special spy abilities like sneaking, hiding, turning invisible, the repeller, stun, disable, or tractor, grab, or enable. These controls allow you to get past the lemons or other types of enemies of the game, like the casino, which we see in the Italian casino from the second movie, where we see the black car guards driving around, guarding the place, just to see if no one's causing really any trouble, which we are anyways. Now, what do I think of this? First, let's start off with the racing section. The racing physics in this game honestly feel pretty good as, like I said, Firebrand Games did have their experience when it comes to creating driving games for the Nintendo DS, so this perfectly feels pretty natural. Turning feels pretty okay, and you can also do the brake and drift mechanic, of course. And there's also a different nitro boost you can use at the bottom of the screen of the Nintendo DS, which allows you to go faster for a short period of time. And certain characters do have their special abilities like Mater turning backwards and can have the ability to jump in this game as well. Meaning that if there are any tight quarters really or really any shortcuts, you can jump through the gates to get past the shortcuts and gain a higher advantage and get to the track faster. Or you can just basically drift around in tight quarters making it easier to get through the tracks that have sharp turns. So basically, yeah, I really do like this game's physics and handling. Well, it's not really perfect per se because the drift is kind of broken and it doesn't exactly work very the most well, but still I've seen worse from other games. And now back to the spy stuff. You know, the spy stuff personally, I would say is kind of my least favorite part of this game 
despite the fact that I do still love Cars 2, no doubt. It's just that the spice stuff when it comes to the gameplay execution, I personally think that the console version of this game did it way better because, you know, there are different types of variety when it comes to it. But for this game, you're mainly just disabling stuff or just getting past the different enemies without getting caught. So it can get pretty repetitive pretty quickly when you start doing the spice stuff again and again. Now, I'm not saying it's bad by any means. It's just that it gets really tired at a certain point. Now, despite being compressed as all hell, the soundtrack is still fairly decent because of the fact that this mainly focuses on spy stuff and there's also some racing stuff in the game as well. This soundtrack shares a pretty good balance between both of those aspects. I'll let you have a listen to some of these tracks real quick. Now for miscellaneous, we're just going to be talking about random stuff about this game that I couldn't really fit into any types of these sections that I put in this video, at least properly so, without it feeling janky and stuff. Well, for one, there were actually supposed to be two more playable characters that were supposed to be in this DS port, that being Lewis Hamilton and Claude Struggs. Claude Struggs being from the first Cars movie as a standard Piston Cup racer, and Lewis Hamilton being an actual World Grand Prix racer, along with Jeff Corvette. Well, not Jeff Corvette, he's not in this game, sadly. He's just really kind of close friends with Jeff, presumably, as we see in the second movie, where they're racing with together and stuff, so, yeah. And basically, that's the other type of characters that were really going to be here. That's kind of it. And also, characters can be changed into different types of paint jobs, like the UK Fitmic Missile and the Herbie Lightning McQueen. Yeah, these paint jobs are kind of obscure, but you can still get them. And... Another thing I like about this game is that they actually gave the World Grand Prix racer some personality here because some of these characters didn't even speak in the movie, more specifically the World Grand Prix racers like Shu Todoroki, Raul Sarul, Carlo Filoso, and yeah, Francesco and Nigel Gearsley. More specifically Nigel because, once again, he barely even spoke or did much of any significance in the film other than being hit by the camera that the Lemons were using to sabotage the World Grand Prix race. So, yeah, I really like that aspect as well. And after you talk with these certain racers, you do end up doing some kind of race where you race against them along with other few AI drivers. And then when you win, you just kind of do that. And personally, once again, this is really good for the World Grand Prix racers because they were kind of wasted potential as in the movie. I'll probably make a type of video where I discuss that type of topic, so... Uh huh. And now we have reached the end of today's Forlorn Classics episode. I will always have a deep pull in my heart when it comes to this game. This game contains so many memories that I used to play. So many times where I lost, where I won, where I replayed, where I got all the skins, where I used the different characters. All of them will remain in my heart forever. So, I would recommend you check out this game. I mean, if you still have an old Nintendo DS lying around, or 3DS, you can pick up a copy of this game for each system you got for this DS, and you can play it. So, this is the end. I'll see you all in the next video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you really learned something from this port, and I'll see you later in the next video. Bye.